What's happening guys? Edgy Outdoors coming to you with a new knife video. We have another Spyderco. This is the Manix 2 XL with G10 scales. This guy's been in my pocket for the last couple of weeks, especially especially on Manix Mondays. So want to go through in Manix Tuesdays, if you will. So I want to go through just some of the general specs real quick just to get it out for the gearheads out there like me uh, and then we'll go through kind of what my takes are on this knife having carried it for a couple weeks um, again I do apologize for not having any videos up recently guys it's just been a busy season as well as being on vacation for for 10 days over the holiday so I will be doing some more knives over the next, or some more videos over the next few weeks. I believe my next one's going to be a sharpening video, so you can stay tuned for that. Now, the Manix 2 overall length on this guy is about um, a little less than 9 inches. It's about 8.9 inches. The overall blade, blade length is less than 4 inches at about 3.8, almost 3.9 inches. Cutting edge is 3.36 inches. Uh, for the cutting edge. The blade is S30V. I really like S30V. It's a good knife, general purpose knife steel. Keeps the cost down on such a big knife. Um, definitely uh, like S30V. Sharpens up really nicely. Good overall knife as we look at knife steels. Good overall knife steel. Again, the handles are G10. The scales are G10. We have a full flat ground blade. It's got a what they, what they call the um, leaf shape. I really like this um, knife shape from Spyderco. Full flat ground with the leaf shape makes it a nice slicer. Um, slices very well. Um, it is not a super thick blade, which you would, might expect from something this size. Um, it's got good thickness, but the blade thickness is only 0.13 inches, so it's actually not a super thick blade on this particular guy. It just ends up being a really nice sized blade. The weight on this guy, we'll go through that real quick. I'll zero this bad boy out. Weight on this is 5.15 ounces. They spec it out at 5.2 ounces. I typically run a little bit light when I get my scale out, which is probably good, so they're not false advertising something lighter. So that 5.2 ounces, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that as far as what I think about that as an everyday carry, which is what they call the best use for this knife. Uh, another piece of this, the price. Um, if you look at, you know, like Blade HQ or Knifeworks or such, it's about $123 for this knife right now. Um, if you can find it in stock, uh, it's actually out of stock as of this, you know, December 6, 2016. So. Uh, on Blade HQ anyway, but for 122 bucks, you're getting a full size, um, a full size folder. Now, let's go in and look at kind of some of the good, some of the bad on this guy, and really a use case. So first, we'll look at the use case of this. Again, they're calling this an everyday carry. For me, one of the downsides to this is that 5.2 ounces or 5.15 ounces that I measured. That's a very heavy to be in my pocket every single day. When I look at what I would consider an everyday carry knife, an everyday carry knife for me is something that I could use any day. No matter what I'm wearing, it'll fit in my pocket, it'll you know stay in my pocket, it won't be obtrusive to what I'm doing that day. When I compare it to a smaller guy, like its little brother, the Manix 2 Lightweight, which happens to be one of my favorite EDC carries, we get the same blade shape, we get the same full flat grind, we also lose about three ounces because of the smaller blade and because of these FRN handles, which are very grippy themselves. So this to me is more of an everyday carry because I can wear this even potentially when I go to coach baseball, my basketball shorts, although I typically even go smaller when I'm doing something athletic than this, but at least this fits in the pocket, this would be used in the pocket, you know, it's not going to be obtrusive to day to day with just about anything you wear. The Manix 2 XL, I feel like it, it is really going to be a someday carry depending on what you're wearing. For me, this is something that I'm going to carry if I'm wearing jeans. I'm not going to wear this 
with slacks, with sports shorts. Um, Maybe if I was doing, you know, like my outdoor khakis or outdoor khaki shorts, I could do something like that with it. But it really is at five ounces. It's big. It really weighs down my pocket and gets in the way when I'm trying to stick my hand in my pocket to get my keys out if I try to use the clip. Uh, the clip is not deep carry on this. I know there's some aftermarket clips that are deep carry that kind of go out to here and up and over. You definitely can buy some aftermarket. It's a standard Spyderco three screw clip right there if you look at it. Um, so you definitely could see you can get an aftermarket clip for this. Uh, for me, I definitely couldn't clip a knife this size to my pocket regardless of the deep carry or not. It just is too obtrusive. Getting your keys out, you're working around the knife. Getting your wallet out, if you keep it in your front pocket like I do, you're working around it or your phone or whatever. Uh, with the not having a deep carry, it also I tend to kind of snag this on things, so that made it kind of difficult. So I ended up carrying it in the bottom of my pocket, which is better with sports shorts or, or khakis, I think, in most cases anyway, unless you're going to put it in your back pocket. So overall size, you know, I think makes it more of a someday carry, not necessarily an everyday carry. This will probably be the pocket knife I take with me when I go camping, for example. The size is very useful when you're camping. You're doing a variety of things from cutting fruits and, you know, cutting to, you know, trimming branches to make a poker stick for the fire, whatever you might be doing. I'm not doing any hardcore camping. I have a camper. But, you know, using a knife is very handy when you're camping and using one that's a little bit bigger where I typically have a little bit heavier clothing on definitely makes sense for me. Um, some of the, uh, I think the good on this to get a full size folder, an S30V for 120 bucks, 125 bucks extremely good price for a knife this size of this quality you know this is a Spyderco knife made in golden so it is American made I think you know 120 bucks for an American made knife of this size this sturdiness this quality is amazing the other good I like about this is the ergonomics of this guy so the ergonomics is pretty interesting with this guy um, I find that I actually like it best when I'm not choked up into this front finger choil when I'm actually holding the knife on its handle. I really get a better ergonomic feel. It fits my hand better, everything, when I'm holding it down on the handle. When I choke up, I feel like there's just a little bit too much gap, and I kind of don't feel like I have the control of this knife. Now, with the lightweight, which, I, again, I carry a lot, I really feel the opposite. I feel like there's not as much control, maybe because it's smaller, and when I choke up on it, I feel a little more ergonomic hold on it with the lightweight. The Manix, the XL, I really feel like when I grab it, I feel it just feels better on the handle. The action on this guy is incredible, just like, you know, any of the Manix or compression locks, either one of them from Spyderco, I really feel like they flick open nice. You don't need a spring assist knife with the Spyderco knives. They do a really good job with action and smooth opening in most of their knives. I think the only thing I've ever had problems with is one of the Enduras, which is a back lock, and, and those just don't flick open as nice, but again, that's an incredible lock. Typically the blade fails before the back lock, but um, the ball bearing lock that's on this guy is another benefit. You know, it does create a nice one hand opening uh, and closing. Um, and, you know, again, it helps with that really nice action. It's also extremely strong. Blade HQ did a, a test on the different locks and they used all Spider Co. And this one actually I think was second behind like a piston lock or something like that that they used. I actually had never used that lock before that they tested but this was stronger than their compression lock how scientific that test was I don't know I just know it's a really strong lock makes for a good nice lockup no blade play at all uh, really just super good knife um, you know when we look at the bad on this knife it's hard to find much bad other than again what I would use an everyday carry for I think it's too big I think it's too heavy for that um, but, you know, outside of that, I mean, this is, there's not a lot bad to say about this knife other than the size for an everyday carry. Just a little too much for an everyday carry for me. Um, but outside of that, it, there's just not much bad to say. You know, they come out with different versions. I'm sure they'll have some different colored scales. They may already be out there. I haven't done a lot of looking to see what else was out there. I just kind of took this, you know, 
default knife that you know is kind of the standard one. You can get this with serrated edges or partially serrated and if you like. Again, I'm personally a fan of the smooth blades. So anyway, that's kind of that'll do it for this guys. I really think that excellent overall knife. If your use and your everyday carry requires you to do a little bit more of the heavy duty work than I do. You know, I'm us using it for boxes and letters and you know simple stuff you know opening packages opening those little plastic packages that you get you know I'm not using heavy stuff but if you're cutting open pallets or you know doing a lot of heavy duty stuff you know it's a good steel for it that'll resharpen and, and sharpen up nicely it's you know very sturdy blade it's going to be super strong super good in your hand you know you can make nice deep cuts with it deep slices you know, it's going to be a good heavy use pocket knife, pocket folder, um, then this would be a great one for you. If you're going to go light, you know, kind of like I do, then I recommend something more like the Manix 2 Lightweight, an Endura, a PM2, um, even the new PM3 that was announced. That will be interesting to do. I can't wait to get one of those in-house. But, uh, yeah, I think the Big Brother is awesome, super nice. Um, but again, it's got to be the right use case, the right carry day for me to use it. So that'll do it. I appreciate you guys watching. Please hit that subscribe button down below and leave some comments. We love to get some feedback. The knife community is incredible. And anybody has or sees anything different than what I've experienced with the XL, I would really love to hear what you guys found. Um, again, we really appreciate it. I want to say thank you to edgyknives.com. Um, for getting us this knife, allowing us to uh, get our hands on it. If you guys have any questions, please let us know. If not, have a great holiday season, guys, and I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Bye.